Programming languages generally have a fundamental structure that forms the basis for the language. For an object-oriented language, that structure is a class or an object. For SQL, the fundamental structure is a table. A table consists of a collection of rows and columns. Each column has a specific data type, such as string, int, or float. Each row contains a uniquely identified collection of data that matches the types of the corresponding column. To create a table in SQL, we use the createTable command. It accepts a name for the table, in this case users, and a series of column definitions. Each column is defined with a name for the column and a type. You can see here that we have a column for first name and last name, which are both of type string. In software architecture, we have the concept of an entity. An entity is a uniquely identifiable object that often exists in the real world. A vehicle could be an entity. A user could also be an entity. When we model our entities in software, we often model them as an instance of a class. For example, a user class containing the fields relevant to a user. When we model those entities in the database, we use tables and records. In this case, our user table contains a series of records where each record represents a specific user entity. For the most simple case, a specific entity is represented by a single row in a table. For more complex entities, we may need to involve multiple classes and multiple tables. Regardless of the complexity of an entity, the key feature is that every entity must have a unique identifier of some kind. In our database, the identifier for an entity is designated as the primary key. This key is unique within a single row in the table. No other row can use the same ID. In our example, we have introduced a new field named ID and assigned it as the primary key because our existing fields are insufficient to provide uniqueness. If necessary, compound keys consisting of multiple columns can form your primary key, although the syntax for that is a little different. If you choose not to specify a primary key, the database will synthesize one for you. However, it's usually better to be explicit about your primary key. When creating your table, it can be useful to define default values for a column. To provide a default value, use the default keyword, followed by the desired value. If no value is provided when inserting data into the table, then the default will be used instead. Default values can be specific, such as setting it to zero for an integer, or built-in functions can be used to generate values for you. Some examples of built-in functions include GenRandomUUID, current date, current time, etc. If you don't specify a default value, then null will be used instead. Additional constraints can also be added to a column to define details about what kind of data can be inserted. One of the most common constraints you will find is not null. This constraint will ensure that a value must be provided for the column. You can also require that values in a column are unique. Both the not null and unique constraints are automatically applied whenever you define a primary key. It's possible to provide a check constraint that will execute a Boolean expression and only allow the update if the expression returns true. For full details on what constraints are available, you can look at the CockroachDB documentation.